Hello and welcome to RTM News. My name is Emmanuel Kurada and without wasting much of your time, we're taking a look at the stories coming in our news for today. Uh, we have a lot of stories actually, but we're just going to look at a few. Uh, we're looking at the issue of SARS in Nigeria. Uh, SARS has become a pandemic in Nigerian um, uh, society today and a lot of Nigerians are clamoring for this uh, um, unit to be uh, disbanded. We also have uh, with us uh, the issue of xenophobia attacks in South Africa where uh, put South Africa Africa first movement is calling on all South Africans to stand up and make sure that the foreigners leave their land. We also have a political tension coming from Kyrgyzstan where uh, the opposition rejected the result and in the process they are protesting asking the government to annul the elections. And we also have with us the different stories coming from Liberia also that the president made a very funny comment that we would like to talk about. But before we go into that, we'll be taking a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You are still with me, Emmanuel Akura, and we're talking about the stories that are coming in our news for today. Uh, in, with me in the studio talking about these stories is Mr. Haru Vishiri. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine, my brother. How are you? Uh, it's so good to have you in the studio with us. Thank and uh, we have a very, um, we have a lot of contentious stories that are coming in our news for tonight. I would like you to shed more light on some of these stories. The first one is the issue of Kyrgyzstan, uh, political tension in Kyrgyzstan, where we have the opposition party protesting testing against the incumbent government about uh, the rigged of the elections. They refused to accept the result that was given to them. And now we have seen the prime minister of this nation um, re resign because of the protest. So what do you have to give uh, our viewers about these uh, stories? Thank you. Thank you so much. When it comes to Kyrgyzstan, yeah. the political landscape of Kyrgyzstan, I think, is now a little bit much more mature than, uh, than what I would say is compared to Africa. Okay. When people speak and there are certain people to listen, mm. that's the best environment okay. that we can, we, can, we can appreciate. Yes. In most cases, much of the leaders, like we say the president, they are always there to defend their interests. Mm. But the truth is, if you, 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 you get into public office to represent people, yeah. you must listen to people. Okay, now before you go further on that story, there's something that I want us to, 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 to bring to your attention. We have the president say that he understands this method. It is a method that they've been using for the past 15 years. We've seen in the past 15 years where two presidents were overthrown using the same um, protest that they are using today. So he's saying that this is not just about the, the result of the election. It is about the uh, it is a coup. He says it's a coup, actually, you know, because he has seen it happen in the past 15 years. Now, my point here is we have seen in Tanzania where the opposition party is banned from contesting election based on the fact that some of them did not meet the criteria, but we know that is a lie. So my, my question to you now is, are we going to see any nation on this continent that when the people cry, protest, they listen to these people? We, we, in Africa, we're still very far to, to, to get to that stage. Yeah. Because most of the African leaders, when they assume power, mm. they assume total control okay. of the people. Yes. So to the extent that they don't want even these people to say anything. Mm. Take it, for example, like you've said in Tanzania. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Why, why would you engage the army to crack down the people who are complaining about a system or an outcome? Hmm. If people have voted for you, and then they are set, you know, there's this thing called opposition parties. Yeah. In Africa, because of our background, we are from a revolutionary background, okay. most of the African countries. Yes. So when I crit critically looked into it, when they say opposition, hmm. they are more of like referring you to a terrorist. Someone who, terrorist is going, organization. Yes, someone who is going against the government that they fought for this country. Mm. You understand? Yeah. But the question is, there are the very same people who are complaining about the very same leader that we are no longer interested in your governance. Then he termed them terrorists. Terrorist organization. Yeah, that's true. Okay, now let, let's, let's look at this now. That you have explained that we all understand how um, what they call politics in Africa played out. 
um, the opposition is being termed terrorist and yeah we've seen that in so many instances there is sorry i don't know whether i can add something on yeah that. look uh, if we look way back yeah when we were suffering from these colonial masters mm. the their approach into disarming us is mm. the same approach that these leaders are doing to are them. doing to the and these are the leaders who are fighting for democracy for justice for everything but the, the very same leaders today Mm. If you want to complain against them, mm. they will deal with you. Oh, wow. So uh, anyway, but we've seen that in Kyrgyzstan. We've seen it in the past 15 years where when they protest. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, thing that, um, uh, one thing that amazes me when it comes to this nation mm -hmm. is the fact that a prime minister of a nation resigned. That's, that's because he is not happy with what is that happening. That raises a question. We, it's, it, it is very difficult to see a leader on this continent decide to step down because the people are protesting. They will not do that. You know what I'm saying? They will saying? not do that. So they if you are serving that. the people, yeah. this shows that if you are serving the people and the people complain that they are not happy with your governance, all you need to do is to step down, step down. and allow them to go, except you are not there to serve them. If you are there to serve them, you should listen to them. Yes. You know, yes. thank you so much on that. And I then, also wanted to comment about this president from Kigastan. Yeah. If he has seen this for the past 15 years, mm. did they address the problem as he was ascending to power? That's the question. Mm. He must not now outline it today because they want to remove him. Yes. He yes. is supposed to address the problem that has been happening for the past 15 years. Why has been my, my former president has been removed this way? Then if there was an issue, he was supposed to address it. I guess you never know when you, I mean, when people are in charge, uh, power intoxicate people. So you can you understand. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, let's move to the next story that is coming in these uh, uh, news for tonight. We're talking about the issue of <laughs> a president made a very, um, I call it a silly comment. He was speaking to a group of people. This is the president of uh, Liberia. And he said to these people that he has received so many messages many of these messages coming from young people between the age of 19 and 20. And these people are asking him for help to pay their rent, support them in their businesses, but they are insulting him in the process. He is not going to support somebody who is disrespecting him. That is not my point. My point here is that he said for the fact that he slept on the floor mm -hmm. when he was coming up, before he made it, why are these young people in a rush to become something in life? Why are they in a rush to leave their parents' house to go and rent houses? You know, I find that to be very reckless as a leader who people voted for you to be in power and be able to assist them, you know, and you are now condemning them that it's too early for them. So to, 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 to ask, to, for you to come in here, at what age? At what age are you going to ask the government for help? That's a, a very good question. Mm. Government help is needed. Okay. To me, mm. as, as, early as, as early as the very day you, you enter this world, yes. the government <laughs> must start planning for you. Mm. The government must start planning, put plans that this person would want education. This mm. person would want medication. This person would want a job. This person would want a job. Mm. So when they are born, bred up to 19, 20 years, when they begin to speak on this, there are some people who are not taking care of the issues that must be addressed. The reason why we have got leaders, the reason why we have got presidents, mm. is for them to now say, how are we going to structure our policies? Not for today. Mm, but for the they leaders of tomorrow. <laughs> you understand? Mm, yes. So, uh, you so know, to me now, when this president is, 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 is saying these statements, first of all, I, 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 I feel pity for him because mm. I, 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 I cherished him yes. from, from where he came from. A lot of people look up to him. From, 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 from where he came from. Mm. One is a footballer into mm. politics. Mm. That was a very questionable scenario. Mm -hmm. You understand? It is, yes. And we thought maybe if he was going to, 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 to deliver, then he would say, that's what we call political diversity. Anyone from any angle, whether celebrity, whether from musician, can come and lead the country to it, the, you to know, Kenan. But mm -hmm. now, his statement now, and what he's continuing to say that they must, because you, I have also suffered. You, you know, I get 
a lot of things from his statement and mm -hmm. I want us to critically look at this. He spoke about the issue of he was poor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Coming from the slump to world best footballer mm -hmm. and he wanted his, the youth in his country to also take that route. And um, that is the mentality of the leaders we have on this continent. Why a lot of people stay in power for 30 years and don't want to leave? It's because of the poverty mentality that they have that we've suffered to get to this point. So now you cannot just come out of school and then I will hand over to you because you don't understand the struggle. Yeah. You understand? So I, that, self, that, that, that sense of entitlement. I, I believe that poverty, poverty mentality, yes, might be there. Mm. But if it would start with his own kids in the house, that he would want them to suffer the way he went through, then I would agree. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. But if he's now that. pointing to other people's mm. children, mm. Then, to then, go then, through that then, process then, before they will become you know, you know, You know, I, I believe what I tell the best leader in Africa mm. is the one who understands my life. Mm. So when, 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 when this man ascends to power with what he went through, we thought he was going to be the best president to address the issues on the ground for the common people in the street. You cannot take someone who has never slept with, without food, someone who, 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 who doesn't know the price of anything in the shop because everything is there, and then you make him a leader and understand the people in the township. Never. But, uh, but now because he came from the township, we thought maybe I was going to address the glitches. If, you, that if you look at most of the leaders mm. that we have on this continent, a lot of them were... Um, if you check their backgrounds, you will be mm. amazed mm. that mm. most of them actually are where, they came from where we are. You, you understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, when they get there, everything changes. You know, anyway, that is for that president. I found that comment to be funny um, and a reckless one from a leader who is supposed to be putting um, uh, 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 measures in place to make sure that he's helping his people, you know, prevent... Uh, them from going through what they're going through right now, but instead he's coming out to blame the youth for uh, for, for being in a rush to make it in life. Um, we're moving to the next story, which is also a very um, a very touching, you know, sad story coming from Nigeria. Um, the issue of SARS. SARS stands for Special Anti Robbery Squad, and I prefer the, to call call them Special Robbery Squad. They should take that A out from the you know, from the, from the, the, the name because they're not living up to that name. And now, just to make you, to give you a background to the story, the SARS were created to deal with hard criminals in the nation. Now, they have turned themselves into policing the nation. They will see you on the road, the way you dress, you are tagged, a criminal, a froster, if you're driving a nice car, you know, you're arrested, tortured. And now the entire communities in Nigeria are living in fear of SARS. SARS, I think a lot of people even prefer criminals to, to SARS because this SARS is terrorizing people right now. And the Nigerians are tired of this SARS. They decided to uh, protest, call the government to disband the SARS. The IGO police, the Inspector General of Police, now came out and said that he wants us to stop mounting roadblocks. He wants them to stop searching people on the road. But the Nigerians are not happy with that. That is not what they're calling for. They're calling for the government to disband this group of criminals. You know. So I don't know what you think about this story. Before we go deep into it, I want to hear your mm. angle, from, my, get your angle from this. My story. take on that one, mm. if, if any particular entity is not serving its purpose, mm. there's, no reason, there's no reason yeah. for its existence. Mm. Looking into this as a police department now, yeah. we, would say when we would say the basic poli policing structure was established, mm. was the group there, it was established as a result of a reason. Now, if it was established as a result of a reason, is it executing the reason that it was established for? No. Number one. Mm, it's not. Number two, who are they saving? 
Who are they serving? Yes. Mm. If they were meant to serve the community against the hardcore criminals, then statistics must be hmm. their redeemer. You are going against these people, but look at the Look at what they've done. Mm. Now, if there is no record, who are they serving? Why are they still existing? Because if they were established for a mission and the mission has been accomplished, mm. they must go. Why would they integrate them into, 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 into a police structure of which they were not trained for that? You see, um, you're making very valid points. I, I, just want to, I just want to say something. I have mm. said this to people a lot of times that before we address a problem, we need to look at the root cause of that problem. Where is that problem coming from? And if you look at the SARS now, um, in as much as we blame them, we think they're, they're brutalizing people, which is true. Look at the people who are going out there on the road to brutalize people. These are poor people who are suffering. By me looking at them, you know that these guys are not being well taken care of. And now the system was designed in such a way that if you, if you take care of these guys, they might not be able to execute some of these dirty jobs. But if you impoverish these guys, allow them to suffer, any assignment given to them, they will look at it as an opportunity to get something from it. We, we, we spoke about the issue of uh, Dubai police. There's no way you're going to bribe them because the cars that they are driving are cars that are going to be more powerful. That you can't even afford to buy petrol in those cars. So how then do you bribe somebody like that? That's because those people are well taken care of. But if you look at these police, they are being given a target. Make sure in one week you're bringing two million, five million naira to somebody who's sitting in the office driving a heavy car. And that vague instruction is not saying, they're not giving you specific instructions that go out there and make sure you get criminals and get money from them. They're saying, make sure you meet a target of five million a day or five million a week. Now, you are f these guys are being forced into making sure that innocent people pay yeah, yeah, for them yeah, to meet yeah. that target. From, 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 from what you are saying, they, they, there are a lot of issues into that. Yeah. Because when you look at the people executing the duty, they don't benefit anything from the system. Yes, they don't. Unless they only take advantage of the corrupt system mm. to corrupt it again. You understand? Yeah. The people who established the, the, the division mm. had an agenda, which goes to the system of governance, which is corrupt. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Now these people, they are not saving a nation. They are saving a particular group, group, group of, of people. people. Who, yes. who if now, in the armpits of the government, they've become very dubious in structuring things that will enrich their pockets. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Because if you go to the public and say, we have established a unit that is going to deal with hardcore criminals, mm. everyone, will, everyone will clap hands. Yes. That's why everybody is looking But now, when, 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 when they are executing their duties, it becomes completely opposite of what you have said, mm. which means they are saving a particular individual. individual. And these guys, they are, they are just expendable people. Yeah, just, just because of time. So what do you think the solution to this problem is? The solution to this problem is to, to, to make a complete overhaul of the, all the leaders that are in charge of those, those things. Because they are just using people for no problem. How can you give an instruction that go and get money mm. from the community? Yes. Let me give you an example that is been happening in Zimbabwe. Mm. Police, the traffic department would go into the road to go and take money. Mm. And we have an incident whereby there was a, a, a truck driver who carried people with a truck, overloaded them. He was drunk. And he passed through 10, political ro uh, 10 police roadblocks. And then he had an accident after the 10 police roadblocks. So they were asking, how did they pass? How did they manage? <laughs> You understand? That means they were not doing their job. So, so at the end of the day, if you instruct a person who is supposed to be policing mm. to look for money, mm. he is not going to police, he's going to look for money. All right. That is, you can hear that. And I just feel um, what, what, what is happening in Nigeria right now is so sad with the issue of SARS. Um, they, our people should actually be protesting to the government. We don't want to have SARS. We don't want, if you talk about revamping of the SARS right now, if they revamp the SARS, you're still going to see the same thing happen again because the same individuals who are sitting up there asking them to bring returns are going to be there. So the most important thing is let's take that SARS out and then make sure we revamp the entire system where the bosses are not, if you are giving instructions for somebody to go on the road and do their job, let them do their job. 
and make sure the investigate proper investigations should be carried out for them to get or arrest criminals rather yes. than just giving them vague instructions mm -hmm. to go out there and then start mm -hmm. arresting that's, that, people. That's why I've indicated that if their statistics is showing that they're not doing anything, Mm. It, there's no point of them yeah anyway Completely. we're we're going into the last story of today's news and we're talking about the issue of put south africa first that is a hashtag that has been trending on social media where south africans are blaming foreigners for their uh, misfortunes uh they, they they're clamoring for their south african citizens to take over cleaners uh, jobs on the road you know um, housemaid being it petrol attendants whatever it is that they, and, I, and i say these a lot of times that as a responsible government, responsible citizens, I will not be clamoring for my fellow countrymen to uh, be cleaners. Rather, I'll be, uh, I'll be fighting the government to make sure that they, uh, they create institutions that are going to employ these people to earn a better living rather than uh, for me to fight for them. To, to be plumbers, for them to be cleaners on the road. So this hashtag has been going on for a while now. They protested, they went to Nigerian embassy in Pretoria calling for the uh, Nigerians to leave uh, South Africa. They were calling for Zimbabweans to also leave. That Zimbabweans are criminals, they are stealing their jobs, Nigerians are drug dealers, they are, um, they, are, they, are, they are human traffickers. You know, this thing is going on for a long, long, long time. And as somebody who's coming from Zimbabwe, um, who has seen it all, who have been there with the president, um, uh, former president Mugabe, who was in charge. You saw what he did to the white people, and at the end of the day, we also saw the aftermath of that. So what do you have to say about these stories? It's, it's a crisis that we're having. Mm. South Africa, we are having a crisis of leadership. Crisis of leadership. Yes. Okay. From the past 25 years of their democracy, mm. if they don't critically look into that. Mm. They are going down the drain like any other African country. We speak of Nigeria today. Mm. It is believed today as we speak it's, 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 it's very poor. Mm. But it is, good, it is rich in oil. Rich in a, a lot of resources. You, ask yourself, you mm. ask yourself a good question. Why? You understand? Yeah. But if you look back again, it was also one of the best countries with the best currency well before. Mm. You understand? Yeah. What happened? Come to Zimbabwe. We speak the same thing. Mm. What happened? Where are we now? Come to South Africa. My question is, is it going to be exceptional for South Africa not to go through the same drain that all these other countries went? Africans? Now, if it is not learning, mm. was the, the whole thing that we are having here is it's, it's a petty issue. Let me give you an example of the recent blue that Makura is just is just a in Houting, yeah. Right. Is it going to solve the problem of the South Africans? Be before lockdown, mm. can you give me an example of any particular industry that was operating at, 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 at 100 percent or maybe at 70 percent? You, you know, that's why it's, it is important that we that are coming from countries that have been through so much, mm -hmm. uh, we have these experiences. Mm -hmm. It is important for us to speak. Mm -hmm. And maybe if somebody can listen, they'll be able to get a thing or two. You know, if we coming from Nigeria, we understand that we're coming from a government that is to, to a lot of Nigerians, no, to a, not even to a, to a lot of Nigerians in non-existence. You see, we don't have a government, and then you're coming from Zimbabwe, where the government we have seen that the government we don't even know even anything called government. There's we don't nothing. know because we are not seeing it. Anything. anything that the people are not benefiting from, That's obviously they, they, they don't know what true. that is. If you call me, a lot of people in some of these African countries and ask them, what is the government doing for you? Trust me, they would ask you, what is government? You know, so if we see these things that are happening right now, and we are here, mm. we know what is happening on mm. ground. These people are being misinformed. When a leader is clueless, they start looking for things to make their people to shift their attention and the mindset of the people. And that is what the leadership of this nation has been doing since day one. They made sure that the, a minister, a whole minister comes out and say, the reason why you're poor is because of your, Someone, your you, brother who is coming from who's Malawi. Tomatoes. <laughs> you know, who is busy selling on, hawking on the street. You know, mm. instead of them to, um, the, the proper solutions, lasting solutions to unemployment, you know, in the country, they'll say no. The problem is because Nigerians are selling drugs, because human trafficking is going on. Now, I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm grappling with this whole idea of foreigners taking jobs in South Africa, because there are jobs in South Africa 
that when you want to apply for a job and you don't have an ID, even if you have the ID, your ID is not written Nigeria on it. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? You, you will get that job. So I don't know where that whole idea is coming from. You know, we, we, we have got leaders, like I said, leadership crisis. We have got people who don't have solutions to the problem. Yes, they don't. Let me give you a, a, an example here. Mm. When Mandela was at the helm of the organization, yeah. his main focus was to deal with apartheid. Mm. You understand? Yes. When they dealt with apartheid, they won. But there were still some systems on the ground. Mm. That was not his mission. He accomplished his mission. He went. But the leaders who followed then, you understand? Mm. Because they, they saw the riches. They did not look into what is the next step. So at the end of the day, what we are having now, mm. the scenario that we are having now, we are having people who are, who are clueless, people who don't have any solution. Take it for example. Let me scale it down mm. to say from a layman's point of view, mm. we've got someone who has been given an RDP with the government for free, believed to be poor. Mm. That person now, someone comes in and say, I want to do my business. Can I, can I, can I help you construct a, 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 a spaza shop here? Mm. You understand? And that person is a foreigner. Yes. Then that person constructs a sponsor shop and put his stock in there and he begins to do business. That money that he is giving to that landlord is making livelihood to that person. Now the government now comes now with a policy that foreigners must what? Stop uh, doing business. Right. My point is not about the livelihood, but whatever. If it was a proper government, was it not supposed, was capacitating someone economically is not, it's not about chasing person and then saying, you, we're going to take in. Mm. We have seen it. We have took the land, but we're not capacitated. Well, where, where is it now today? The very same president today is now saying, let's give back the, the land. To we were people. not capacitated. True. Capacitated the person, you understand, mm. to say, this one is welding here, right? We know you're now, we know you're now a, a, a local person. You are employed by this person. Why can't you now then say, we educate you, we give you resources, mm. you open a better thing than this one. Mm. Then we look for ways to pipeline your, your products into the, 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 the market. Then from there, mm. we would say, are you not automatically shrinking this one? By virtue of shrinkage, this one will automatically be forced to come and work for you. We're not talking of ownership of resources. Thank in, you. Uh, in a layman, in, in a layman <laughs> method. I, I wish you can continue uh, going on and on and on because the, 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 the topic is actually a very interesting one. You know, the... Um, I wish we have enough time for us to um, be able to finish analyzing it, but we don't have enough time. But, you know, I've got one point that I want yeah. to talk about, mm. about the statement that you, 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 you said in the first that put South Africans first. Mm. I don't understand. After 25 years of in their democracy, mm. we they not put South Africans Take first? first. Yeah, Why that, that, today? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying that when you have a leadership that is clueless, that have no, no economic ideas on how to move the nation forward, <laughs> the or better, you. you know, or improve the, on the economy, mm. that is what you get at the end of the day. Mm. You have leaders coming out to make reckless comments, mm. MPs coming out to, you know, say that South Africa should be first, foreigners are taking their jobs, and then you can't see that. They start showing otherwise. You know, we go to jobs, you go to mining companies, you see that the people who are being employed in these companies are South Africans. Yes, and you know, so that, I don't know where, so to, to them, the mindset is that if you are a cleaner in South Africa, as somebody from Zimbabwe, as somebody from Malawi, somebody from Nigeria, then you're taking their job. So the they target now, they narrow it to a point where they, they feel the cleaning job is what is killing the economy. What then you would know? you think of a, a, a country, you understand, mm. that is claiming for its first class citizens to be cleaners. That's what I was saying. After it has invested so much in the education system, education building, system university. building universities. By the end of the year, they are releasing over 100,000 students qualified in various different disciplines. Mm. In then their, you want them to their, be, oh, oh, what they want they want be petrol attendants. Is to become a petrol To be a housemaid. You know, these are the jobs that they are saying people are taking from. We, 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 we have been looking to, to, to at this nation mm. as the light of Africa. You understand? Mm. When you see people come to your house, you have got a future. Yes, that's true. Actually, you have something to offer. You, if you don't have anything to offer. They won't so, go there. Where we are going with these guys now? Mm. Yes, of course, they might say you must leave. One day we will leave. 
But where are they going? That's the question. Yeah, the, 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 the thing is they're failing to understand, they're failing to realize that when somebody comes to you, you should be able to check yourself Check within yourself. What do we have that yes. these people are coming? What can't we? What, what can't we as people do? What these people are doing for us to excel in whatever it is they want. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. And uh, to the people out there, um, we've spoken about a lot of these stories in our news for today. We um, looked at a president who made a funny comment about his youth um, not being able to, you know. Um, be patient, you know, they're, they're rushing to, to become business owners and rent houses instead of them to sleep on the floor like he did um, uh, to become something in life. You know, we once had a president who called his youth that they're lazy, they don't know what they're doing. Now we have a president who is seeing that his youth are uh, rushing into things. They should take it easy. At the age of 19, 18, they should st see, stay with their parents and eat their parents' food and not hustle, try to become something in life. They should take it step by step according to him. I also look at the issue of Kyrgyzstan where the political tension is high and a lot of protests is still going on in Kyrgyzstan as the president is saying that let's go back to the battlefield, let's go back to the playing field and make sure that we contest if you want to win the election, win it there. But then that was the fear that they were in before the elections were rigged. Anyway, we also spoke about the issue of put South Africa first, put South Africa first uh, is a hashtag that is trending. People are talking about foreigners taking their jobs, foreigners doing that, uh, committing crimes. We don't condone any crime committed by anyone. Crime should be dealt with. Crime should be dealt with if you are coming from Zimbabwe, from Nigeria, from South Africa. If you commit crime, that crime should be dealt with. And somebody says something very, um, very profound that I found that since the issue of um, gender-based violence is is, is, is high in South Africa, they're trying to shift their attention from that so that they will give people a different mindset that, look, uh, South African men should not be blamed for killing their women or abusing their women. Let's blame these on foreigners for uh, human trafficking, you know, for taking our jobs. And with that, we can take the attention away from the people. Anyway, that is just according to them. It's not according to me. I don't believe in those things, but I'm just sharing what somebody said. Anyway, we also spoke about the issue of SARS in Nigeria. SARS becoming a terrorist organization in Nigeria. I call it terrorist organization. Yes, you can quote me anyway. That is what I say, because that is who they become. They are terrorizing our people. Innocent people are being tortured. People are being killed. People are being, um, you know, Jolled into giving false uh, uh, testimonies that about things that they know nothing about. That is who SARS are. Nigerians are calling for SARS to be disbanded, and I, I, I completely agree with them. Anyway, we've just looked at a few stories that are coming in our news for today, but as I come your way again, we'll be talking about more stories that are happening in the world of politics, crime, whatever it is that is coming our way, we're talking and bringing that to you. Myself and the entire team here at RTM want to say a very big thank you and do have a blessed day. Television ministry.